Our previous topics were all about the presidents of the Third Republic of the Philippines. We have Manuel Rojas, Elpidio Quirino, Ramon Magsaysay, Carlos Garcia, Justado Macapagal, and Ferdinand Marcos. All of them contributed in stabilizing the economy of the Philippines during their terms of service. And we will be having a short review how the Third Republic ended for us to understand the succeeding topics in the long run. President Marcos was the last president of the Third Republic from 1965 to 1968. The first term of Marcos seemed exceptional or exemplary. Let's talk about the five important programs and policies that gave him the favor of the citizens. First, the Philippines harvested more crops than the country needed. The government was able to address the need to produce more rice. In fact, a new variety of rice was introduced to the farmers, which was called Miracle Rice. This enabled the country to export rice to other countries. Next, we have the Green Revolution Program that encouraged the people to plant vegetables at backyards and vacant lots. Not only that, reforestation of the new dead forest was also encouraged. Third, strong foreign relations. The Association of Southeast Asian Nations or ASEAN was also organized. Its primary objective was to promote cooperation in the field of agriculture, trade, and industry within its members, which are the Philippines, Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Singapore. This association strengthened the relationship within them. Fourth, decrease in crime incidents. One of the challenges faced by the Marcos administration was the rising incidence of crime in the Philippines. Smuggling of goods was widespread. That prevented the government from getting enough taxes from these products. But with the help of law enforcement agencies, smuggling was suppressed. Strict enforcement of laws against people who violated it was ordered. And finally, massive infrastructure projects. Marcos also improved the country's infrastructure by increased construction of roads, bridges, schools, and high-rise buildings including irrigation system. Because of these successful programs by the Marcos administration, the Philippines was known as one of the leading economies in Asia during the last years of 1960. But these programs would not be possible without the government funds. To undertake the projects, President Marcos convinced the Congress to make new laws raising taxes. In addition, the government obtained loans from banks here and abroad. With all these great accomplishments under Marcos' administration, it was no surprise that Marcos won again as president in 1969 against his contender, Sergio Osmeña Jr. Marcos was the first Philippine president to be re-elected. During his campaign, he made use of several slogans like, Marcos means more rice. Marcos means more roads. Marcos means performance. And he believed that the dignity of the nation should be upheld by using the famous slogan, We shall make this nation great again. However, Marcos' popularity started to decrease during his second term of office in 1969 to 1971. His style of political rule became less democratic and more authoritarian. 
because of the problems faced by the country during that time. At the same time, the country began to experience serious economic problems in 1969-1971. There was a wide gap between the rich and the poor. Poverty and misery became widespread as the rich became richer and the poor became poorer. Spread of communism, acts of sedition and violence committed by the CPP and PA, which are the armed sector communists, they became stronger. These are the leftist group or the rebel group against the government. Students' activism emerge. Demonstrations staged by students often became bloody riots as the military and students clashed. Corruption in the government. Government rose officials who pocketed large amount of money from the projects they oversaw. And finally, serious economic problems that included inflation or the rise of prices of goods while the value of the peso declined. The Philippines owed more money to the other countries. The president's promise that this nation will be great again did not succeed. As a conclusion, during his second term, he faced these problems that led to the people's loss of faith in the government. The Third Republic of the Philippines lasted for over two decades and ended in the year 1972.